my big theme in life right now mm-hmm. is being more intentional with the people that I already have in front of me mm-hmm. and acknowledging and being more open and unreserved with people that want to get close to me. Because before I'm like, I don't fuck with it. I don't no, like no. it's like a, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like cause people like the the couple times I've opened up my heart and my home and like my resource to mm-hmm. people that were bought to me, they fucked me over like in like mm-hmm. crazy ways, disrespecting mm-hmm. me, like mm-hmm. spit on my face type shit. And it's taken everything in me not to crash out because mm-hmm. of it. But once you recognize like your mission and why you were placed here and how valuable you are, like you realize like these are people that needed some type of healing or needed to get that off. Like they projected all their issue onto you. So like if you really want community, that's going to be inevitable. You feel me? Like mm-hmm. you're going to have to take a risk just like with anything else. Like you want to build something beautiful and authentic. You have to put yourself out there. Welcome, Mind Over Matter, baby. I'm your host, Deja Wallace. And if this is your first time joining, welcome. If this is not your first time joining, welcome back. I appreciate you. Like, you really came back to listen to another episode. Shout out to you. You really came back. Like, I love that for you. Oh, where's my popper? I have to get my popper. It's episode 100. Big episode 100. Give me two seconds. (laughs) I'm going to clean it up. This your 100th episode? That's so fire. And now I'm honored. Now I'm extra excited. That's super sick. Happy episode 100. Happy episode 100. You got to edit that. Yeah. Like the kids screaming yay. So mind over matter. I love that for us. And if you've been rocking with us from the beginning, I appreciate you. I made a mess just for y'all. Because like that's how much y'all mean to me. It's a vibe though. It's a vibe. I'm sorry, Art. I, I made a mess. I didn't think this through. <laughs> but yeah, I have a very special guest for my audio listeners. I know you can hear, you can hear my guest right here. Introduce yourself. Let the people know. Well, go on. My name is Dion Raps. I'm from Queens, New York. I'm a rap extraordinaire, photographer. I cooks. Yeah. So, Dion, Mr. Dion Chambers, thank you for joining me today. Of course. Thank you for having me. It's my, like, first, like, podcast, like, interview thing ever. So, like, usually I make fun of podcasts, but wow. I really, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, but I really like your content, like, a lot. Thank you. Like, thank it's you. of substance. It's not I'm like, trying. who should split the bill? <laughs> like, type <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, they will never catch if, if you ever hear, see content like that, I'm not okay. Type shit. It's like, yo, like, who should eat the bread at the table? Like, crazy shit. I'm not okay if you see content like that. So, we're going to get into just a lot today. We're going to get into Culture Con. That's where we met. That's where we met. I shwit it all. I'm shwit it all. That's where it all started. We're going to talk about the pros and cons of that. Of just events in general that are catered to content creators. The pros and cons of that. Um, we're going to talk about building an authentic community and life as a creative. So if this is something you're interested in, kick back, relax, and enjoy this episode. So on today's episode, I already talked about, I said all of that. All right, Culture Con. Culture Con. What did you expect going in and what is Culture Con for people who don't know what that is? So I went to Culture Con last year. I'm no way a brand ambassador. CultureCon was something that I work for this woman that owns this archive. She like does archival work for like hip hop. So mm-hmm. like anything like since the conception of hip hop, like she archives, like it, it's super sick. Mm-hmm. Um, her name's uh, Serena Gates. She's amazing. She actually gave me a, a ticket last year to CultureCon. But the day I went, like, I didn't know what to expect, honestly. I just knew it was like a hub for creatives where you can find a job and connect with others and look at panels and things. It's Mm -hmm. not really like my forte. Mm -hmm. It's something like, let me step outside my comfort zone and go to. 
Last year, I didn't get to experience it like in the great way. You were working. That's all right. I was sick. I was sick. Oh. I went. It was rainy. It was cold. I, I was sick. I was anxious. I was like, I stayed for like a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. The lines were ridiculous, like for the job fair, for the activation. So I ended up going home. This year, um, I was able to get the ticket again and have to pay for it. I was like, okay, like now I'm on the mission because before the job fair last year was really crazy. Like that was my main like thing of going. I was like, okay, I want to find a job in my field. I want to connect with others and I want to like really have this be like a fruitful, productive moment. Like, Did you get a job? Huh? I, so I, I connected with this really cool dude from Navy Yard that we connected on LinkedIn and he's like, pushing me forward into um applying for like these different positions that like you wouldn't normally like find it's like yo like i'll put you in this base mm -hmm. and we'll reach out if something fits like what you like you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so like I, I accomplished like something from it for me it was cool but um i don't know this year was just like it was so different in like a good way and like like a way that i didn't really favor because my whole intention was to come for like work feel me but um it felt more like a showcase, you know what I'm saying? Mm. For just like they still had the job thing, yeah, yeah, which I'm tight because I didn't realize that until after I I'm left. Yeah. I, I went, it was cool. Um, I don't know, it wasn't like last year, like I went and mm -hmm. essentially it was me talking to recruiters and them directing me to the website. You feel me? I over here, I got like 10 resumes in a folder, like mm. I'm ready, I got my elevator pitch ready. And basically, it was just them explaining to me what the company is and does. And hey, go on the website and see what jobs look good for you, but like. Could have did that at home. You feel me? Mm. Like I thought, like you know, that was this year. Yeah, that, that was, that was okay. for this year. So maybe right. like that. I didn't was miss out anything. Cool. Type. You feel me? So maybe like I don't really do the job fair thing. So maybe that's how job fairs usually go. Yeah, that's, like that's how they are. Yeah. Okay. So I I didn't know that. So I'm mm -hmm. expecting like okay, like maybe I'll get an interview on the spot. I think mainly with job fairs, I'm actually going to one next month. Just be personable. Make them laugh. You gotta. Yeah. Just hee hee ha ha. Yeah. Funny, I need bread. <laughs> <laughs> I need but if you move like I need bread, like everybody else, they just like I right, get in line. <laughs> no nah, facts, no nah, facts. So you went there to basically like get a job. Yeah, like not just get a job, like get a job. You feel me? Like expand the network, like okay. expand the field, like just get something from it other than a party party with like beautiful <laughs> black people. You feel me? Like yeah, that's I'll go to nowadays and do that. You feel me? Like yeah, I want yeah. like something to come from this. You mm -hmm. know. Um, so did it meet your expectations or it's it... hard to have expectations on something that I've never really been to you know, feel me like mm -hmm. a, like a, a type of crowd I've never really been with like these are all like brown and black creatives from all over New York flying in throwing on like their best low key it felt like a Met Gala you know what I'm saying so yeah, like I did. It, it's just like, and then with the prices of the tickets, and I know people like really and the dropping food. bags and the food. That was and it's like this was this is just a big block party with with panels. Expensive you know what I'm saying? A big yeah, a big expensive block party. Mind you, uh, the energy and the atmosphere of it was amazing. But um, I don't know. I just felt on a professional tip, I would have wanted more to come for it. But that's my experience. Maybe there are mm -hmm. people that actually did like get to connect with others and and got some type of job from it or got some type of uh something more than just like a photo op. You know what I'm saying? Mm. My expectations going in, I felt like I was just going there for the vibes. I did pay for a ticket. I kind of wanted to just put myself out there because I seen it last year. I wanted to, I'm not going to lie. I was like, maybe I will meet somebody that is like, got some type. I wanted to meet somebody I could put on my podcast. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like an Issa Rae or somebody. Type. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, But that was very unrealistic of me. Because <laughs> like, they were like all ex like in their own yeah. world. Like the girl from Poor Minds, I seen them walking around getting okay. food and stuff. But then they just went back in their yeah. own the little bubble. zone. Yeah. yeah. So... That's not unrealistic. That's very realistic. Like, as soon as you're three paces away from somebody, like, mm -hmm. that is access for you. But I don't want to just come off like, oh, can you be my podcast? Like, yeah, of course. Like, obviously, corny. relationships has to be organic, but you exactly. did come with intention. You feel like that yes. was the intention. But other than that, I have very, no expectations outside of that. Like, I was just okay. like, I'm just going there. I don't know what to expect from yeah. the event itself, but I know what I want to do when I get there. Okay, shit. Yeah, basically, yeah, basically that. Because, mm -hmm. like, like big ups culture con, you feel me? Like yeah, they did a big one. That's like they the third one, one or the fourth one. But yeah, they did their big OD, one. OD, right? So I had expectations of my own mm -hmm. that doesn't fall on anybody except me. Yeah. You feel me? 
which is why I normally don't have expectations. Mm -hmm. Can't be disappointed. Yeah, exactly. And I, I would say I was not disappointed. I think that for me, especially because I hate going to places alone and I couldn't convince anybody to buy the ticket to go with me. I ended <laughs> up going alone. And what that did for me was it like kind of made me just gain this sense of confidence that I've never felt before. Mm. When you go to a place alone, especially when people are like in their groups and they, yeah. you know, planned about this all year, it's like, okay, you're here alone. You have no excuses now. Like you got to put yourself out there. Yeah. And when I actually did that, they said, does anybody from the audience want to speak? I grabbed the mic and I was just shouting my stuff out. And it just made me feel like, yo, you could do it. Like it's, you're all in your head at the end right. of the day. Everything you tell yourself is all in your head. So that was like very like cool. Yeah, so that cool. was when I first saw you. That was literally yeah. when I first saw you. And I, literally, I had went to that tent because I was like, my social battery was dead. So I went to the tent. I'm like, nothing's going on here. Let me sit, catch catch a little break. And then they were like, oh, little networking session. I'm like, this is what I wanted. This is mm-hmm. actually what I wanted. So the network session in the tent, and nobody kind of knew what was happening. Yeah, it was literally just a few people outside. Yeah. That's why I didn't care to shout my thing out. I'm like, it's not a big crowd. Like, I don't know these people. T- type. And then you said something that resonated, which was wanting to do something consistently, but consistently at a high level. Mm. You know, because what was it? It was something along the lines of like, you can do something consistently, but the quality is going to suffer at some point just because of like putting things together at such a high level all the time. Like it's not Especially real- by yourself. Yeah, by yourself. Yeah. It's not realistic. Yes, exactly. And, and I passed by you on the jerk chicken line. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get no jerk chicken, y'all. I got some vegan food. I'm on my vegan tip. You're on your vegan tip? Vegan. On your sebi tip? And I got my rum punch. Type. <laughs> okay, you got it. But um, you were like the second person. I was like, yo, what you said resonate? I'm like, I ain't gonna say nothing that profound though. But it's just crazy because once you put yourself out there, you don't know who's gonna resonate with something that you would have like overlooked. Yeah. You know? That's why I really liked that event because it was like very invigorating. It was like, Yo, you could literally meet anybody and they could be doing anything. Anything. Like, like this likes posted cards, like post stamp. It was somebody like. in there that worked with Rap Radar. And he was really? like right there, yeah. Oh, on the radar or Rap Radar? I mean, on the radar. On the radar who? He had like some Gap sweater on and he was under the tent too. Do you recall their name? Gabe. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, I know Gabe. Gabe. I knew me and Gabe were like mutual followers for like a minute when he was working at the radio station and... We just would kind of just DM and mm-hmm. then he took off for On The Radar and he's, uh, I met him in person, I think before On The Radar dropped, uh, I was at this girl's um, single release party, Victoria, she was like, dropped this fire single, he was Monet? there. We fu- huh? Huh? No, not Monet. Oh. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, my homegirl from Queens and she dropped this fire single and Gabe happened to be there. I'm like, oh shit, like we finally meet in person, like. New York is really funny like that. It's like if you yeah. do music, the six degrees of separation really become two or three. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So, and then uh, another dude there that I met through my homegirl in Atlanta, his name's Romel. He's been killing shit at Republic Records. Um, it's just kind of weird how like everybody just knows everybody some way, somehow if you yeah, do music and you do music at like a mm-hmm. higher level than a nigga with like a, a, a SoundCloud in a studio mic. Like, you feel me? Mm-hmm. Um, it's It's interesting. Yeah, it's crazy because I didn't think I was going to see anybody I knew. And I seen three people I had on my podcast. I'm like, what the hell? It's crazy, like the whole six degrees separation thing. Yeah. Like this world is not as big as we think it is. OD. OD. Like, somebody can know somebody who knows somebody like, oh, that's my cousin. Yeah. And that's my cousin. OD. Who the, who the, who the, I, met? I met someone that told me something. Oh, I was with this amazing artist, amazing artist yesterday in the studio. We met for the first time and she's telling me all this, all the, all this, uh, people she worked with, who she, she's written some of my favorite songs. I had no idea. Oh, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? She lived right in Queens. You know what I'm saying? Just moving low key. She's mm-hmm. working on a great project. I don't know if I can like say anything about it. So I'm just going to keep it no name, but we're always in reach of like, spectacular things and you'll never know until you open up your mind or just open up your eyes a little bit just pay attention to something outside your immediate surrounding Mm -hmm. and um which is funny which is kind of like what that book i was telling you about like involves it's like you literally have to be intentional with everything you acknowledge in like a weird way you feel me it's like 
um, like like oh, nothing's coincidental. Yeah, yeah, nothing's coincidental at all. Reason, yeah, at all. Nothing like everything is for a reason. Like even me, yo, I wear it to everything. Once that you I love. see a New Yorker go, that's how cute <laughs> it is. Type shit. I walked past you on a line. And I was with my homegirl Jonesy, and I was like, "Yo, like, wait, wait here." And I was, I kept walking. I'm like, "No, I'm not gonna say nothing. I don't want to, you know. She's doing her thing, like she's doly. Like, I don't want to like bother her. She may think I'm like I'm on some other shit. I'm just keep walking." But I had this feeling in my like my stomach. It was like tightening up. It's like go back, <laughs> go back and tap in. Something, something <laughs> good is going on. Yo, and I'm trying to like, yo, like what and you look said. Look what it happened. Out type shit. Look, and now I'm on That's my uh, uh, my first. Wife podcast and a great uh, great platform Period. of something of substance you feel me like something Period. that feels good to be in conversation about exactly I'm not talking about and you know no mad people, people that i know really yeah see that's how true it is the universe and everything okay. all right so the showcasey part uh, i want to get into that you said like it felt very showcasey we're gonna yeah. talk about the cons it wasn't all kumbaya there. yeah i did feel that Kind of yeah. like a dystopian vibe. Like, yo, is this really where the future is going? Like, like yeah, it's like... Because it's like... I like some of the McDonald's food. What the f*** do you know about streetwear? You feel me? Like, <laughs> having a screen printing class with McDonald's was so interesting. Mm, why? Did you see that? Elaborate on that. Because it's like... The, so, I forgive me if I'm misquoting something, but McDonald's is moving forward in streetwear fashion and dropping, like, they're going to unveil, like, a line of closings of, like... Just like 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 high fashion denim, like streetwear, like cool shit, like making it fashionable, like dicky looking like workwear outfits, things. Okay, that I can see that. Like a fashion line. And you know, I just I thought it was that. like and that's the thing, there were so many activations, but like for the amount of activations there were and the amount of people there were, you can be online for like an hour, like waiting, like yeah. the Shane Moisture line was stretched. You feel me? The McDonald's line was stretched. Yeah, I didn't like, wait in none of that. You feel me? Only so the like, jerk chicken line I waited. <laughs> but samples and like, I don't want to like, like we're, we're at this event and like, we're just waiting in line for like a quarter of the event, half the event. Like it's not something that's favorable. Mm -hmm. I think the main bang for the buck is just sitting for the panels. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, all right, I said dystopian vibes in terms of like, you know, when you just see a content creator creating, it could be cringe sometimes. Oh, OD. And when you see like a bunch of them in their own worlds doing it. OD, like, do you look like what? NPCs? For... The world, like... Mm, ice cream, so good. Yeah. Like, that shit. <laughs> That's how I felt. I was just like, like I was seeing people that I only see on my feed and then seeing them in real life. I was just like, yo, what the black, in the black mirror is going shit. on? Like, why the fuck? got the ring light for it. Like, Yo, you, outside it's crazy. It's like the sun is light. out. Why do you got the reflector? He's like, yeah, can you take this for me? Point, yeah. I'm point 0.5 on the camera, 4K. Yeah, it was, that was just the weird part to me. And it kind of felt very um pretentious at some points. People were just moving like they should make the best patty in the world. <laughs> they didn't have to say it, but it just felt like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, don't talk to me. That's part of being like a creator and an artist is like that is a, a like a fine fine line between like humbleness and then also being delusional to think you're the greatest in the fucking world and in order to make it as any type of creator like what we were just talking about earlier you need to have some of that delusion just That's to true. feel like you're the best but i don't know the whole but you gotta humble thing. yourself sometimes you gotta feel like you're best but it's about how you come off to others you know what i mean yeah and it's like weird because you don't also want to like police how someone shows up in the world as That's their true. best self like mm. if you want to act like a and, and that empowers you. Unfortunately, you have the right to be a and have that empower you. That's but um, I don't know, content creation, that's so weird because I'm not a content creator. Like, I'm an artist, you feel me? Like, I'm not mm -hmm. doing, like, a day in the life and vlogging about what outfit I'm going to wear. Like, I'm making music, you feel me? Like, I'm pouring out, like, these inner thoughts type shit, like, this mm -hmm. therapy for me. So it's weird to be in, in that space with people that create, like, dopamine hits for people to consume mm -hmm. on the internet. Mm -hmm. And because the conversation is different around it, it's like, okay, you're here with the intention to make content to showcase this thing online, but like, but what's after that? You go to the next event, you make content about that event and the next thing and the next thing. And it's not really a talent. It's like, you're a, a social journalist. You feel me? You're just a socialite mm -hmm. that, that vlogs it. So, um, which that's a, that's a lane of its own. That's a bag of its own. Like I'm not dissing it, but the conversation gets muddy when like I'm coming, like I'm showing up as like a music artist, photographer, and like mm -hmm. I don't like doing the whole performative, like be on Instagram every day and make a 
TikTok dance or some stupid like that. Like, it's not something that <laughs> yeah, I you find don't like enjoyable. Chase an algorithm. Yeah, chase an algorithm. Like, obviously, there's some rules we got to play by, but like, I'm not going to sit here and, and shake my hips. My song is talking about like therapy, and I'm over here shaking my hips to it. I'm gonna shake my hips because I like dancing. So it's not- yeah, I like dancing, but I'm sorry to dance and talking about you know struggling. <laughs> you feel it? <laughs> and did you feel like individuals were like clout chasing out there? Did you have that vibe or anything? Clout chase? I don't. Um. Well, for one, I kind of don't pay attention to it. You feel okay. me? So like. Because I'm jaded by people like mm-hmm. low key, but um, I saw some people. I wouldn't even call it clout chasing. People, some people were there to make a statement, okay, and they did, and I like, but they weren't being weird about it. At least not me, because you know, like I just kind of observe and just keep mm-hmm. walking. But people there in like their their Sunday's best, like the suits went crazy. There was like these two dudes that were in this, these crazy bedazzled suits. I was like, yo, like these niggas was here on a mission, like, and they and they got mm-hmm. it. Um, you seen the guy with the beard and the. Yeah, flowers. Yes, bro. Oh, that shit is so hard. Like, yo. yo, what? Okay, so what I was saying, what I was saying to somebody is that despite like whatever qualms I had with like like my experience at the event, it felt good to be there. Like I mm-hmm. felt like everyone that was supposed to be there was there. I didn't feel like a clout chasing vibe. I felt like, yeah. well, you put a price tag and an intention behind an event the right type of people are going to show up. You know what I'm saying? Like, it didn't feel like people were there on, like, weirdo shit. You feel me? Like, you paid 300 plus to be here. I know you're not going to, like, make it an uncomfortable experience for yourself or for others. Mm-hmm. You feel me? Like, I, I met some, like, really, like, good souls there. Mm-hmm. So I can't attest to the cloud chasing. Yeah. So, you know. Same, same. Um, As a more reserved person, I don't like the word introvert. As a more reserved person, how do you capitalize yourself in environments like that? Because I did see like the girls from Poor Minds and obviously I wanted to speak to them, but I just didn't. It's just the New New Yorkian in me. I just can't just go up to somebody without like something to offer them offer them and not just be like a fan, just a pure fan. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So how do you like and also like my um anxiety was kicking in, so I couldn't <laughs> I didn't know how to like communicate to them. But how do you like capitalize on situations like that especially as a reserved person um i have to you have to read the room like like, in order to like capitalize on situation for one like i've been in rooms with like the most random people in the world like i was like yo how it's like how am i meeting like i've met jay-z backstage at a show that like was weird so he dapped me up i was like i was walking i was on my photo i was at made in philly with um no, I was at Made in America that the concert thing he does in Philly mm-hmm. with my manager Yams. I'm walking backstage. I'm trying to rush to the next tent, and then photo Rob and Jay are walking. I'm looking. I'm like, you see me? He's like, "Well, God." Uh-huh. I was like, "Son, what?" <laughs> <laughs> and it's you kind of just have to um, just you belong there. You're you're mm-hmm. there for a reason. You feel me? Like you you're just there. Like, mm-hmm. just treat it like you would yeah. treat anything else. Give people their flowers. Like, yes. if there's an artist that I like, it's like, yo, like, I'm just that month, like, yo, like, I really like what your work. You feel me? Like, there's a difference between showing respect and giving someone flowers and, like, being super fanned out. And, like, sometimes it's hard not to fan out because mm-hmm. of someone's, like, influence, like, on, like, whether it's your developmental years or just like your everyday, like their vocals or mm-hmm. their artwork is something that's getting you through life. Mm-hmm. And like, that's your, that's like your perspective, but you have to be mindful of the fact, like the people that you're approaching are still individuals themselves. And like, exactly. they yeah. may not be so, you know, quick to, to be receptive to you. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like people have to be comfortable. Like the same, like first conversation we have, like it was a little, like we had to feel each other out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So someone that's in that situation definitely has to fill you out. Yeah, exactly. And rather they take to you quickly mm-hmm. or... And they're not obligated to... At all. Or it's like a high and buy. Yeah. Especially if you want to like work with somebody. Mm-hmm. Like I met like I met like Raekwon on like a fashion week and like um, Cinnamon Jones, which is like one of the originators of like Woo Wear. Uh, she went to FIT and that's how me and her got close. She's like, oh, you went to FIT too? And she's like, yo, come meet that's Ray. Da, 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 da. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Yeah. And you kind of find your in, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? You're like, and it was a complete. He was accident. his name is Ramel. Oh, 
the you said the person who made Wu Wei. No, no, Wu-Wei. Cinnamon Jones is the, oh, okay, one of the okay, like okay. originators of Wu Wei. She introduced him to Raekwon. Okay, okay. From Ray from Wu Tang, yeah, from Wu Tang. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I was talking like, yo, like, I like, I like, and you just kind of just conversate when. They- I was like, yo, I like your last project. Mm-hmm. He had dropped this crazy song called Marvin, which mm-hmm. is basically him illustrating the life and death of like Marvin Gaye. And I'm like, bro, this right. this song is fucking crazy. You chopped it up. And then outside, I was like, yo, now I'm like, okay, we spoke. Maybe I should just let them know like, yo, I do photo work. Mm-hmm. Like, here's my card. He's like, if you ever need any type of like video photo work, like here, do it. You just See, ca- for me, the part that I can't get past is the emotions like I want to say something it's not that I, I don't want to seem like I'm coming off of the, as a fan it's like I literally choke up like I don't know what to say I just mm. like don't say any I seen um Tracy Ellis Ross wow I, I first love her. class I have such a crush on her no no um security nothing first class on a plane to Jamaica she was sitting first class alone nobody was sitting next to her and you know what I did? What? Not Nothing. Fucking- because I don't know. Like I'm my emotion. I'm still like I don't yeah. know how to. Um, I'm not gonna be extroverted. I just get I get mean to myself. Like that's one of the things too. Like when I feel like that, I'm like stop being a bitch. <laughs> I mean, like, are you like you're just like not like shake it off. Like you'll never be in 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 the next to this person anyway. But you know what? Having good experiences with celebrities also shape you because when I first started photographing my stupid ass, one of my first gigs, um. I was photographing uh, uh, like an Adidas source event and I pulled it in like a three piece suit. I was like 17, 18. I put it in like a full suit and like a button up <laughs> and all the true religion and like streetwear and all that. I look out. goofy as hell. Girl. And I'm baby faced with these thick <laughs> black glasses. And then Waka's like, yo, like big flock, you know, that's me up. Like Waka Flocka was like one of the first celebrities I met. That me up, made me feel welcome. I was in VIP. The security was really nice Bye. to me. Um, Jack Harlow when before he uh before what's popping I met him, mm-hmm. um he was super nice and like meeting these people that I was listening to on the regular, and having them be receptive to me and like showing me love like especially so early in my career really like gave me that extra oomph to like just approach people and like talk mm-hmm. to them you feel me because the worst someone can say is like like yo I, not right now you know what I'm saying I met I met Tyler the Creator at a Milk Gallery with um. Lucas Sabat had like a, a photo show. Uh Lucas Sabat, forgive me. And um he had like a hot mess, I think it was called. It was like a little like photo thing. And I, I was I was walking backwards. I bumped into this nigga and I was like, yo. And then nigga looked at me, he's like, yo. And it was fun. taco. And uh, yo, it sounded like you would do that. Yeah, <laughs> it, it sounded just like <laughs> and we we like talked and it was like a, such a great conversation. Like I was like, okay, like this dude's cool as fuck. Mm-hmm. And I go to Tyler, and Tyler was like, "You don't want to talk?" I'm like, "I'm like, yo, I know you don't like photos. Could I maybe get a a flick?" He's like, "Nah, like not right now." And then we went and enjoyed the rest of the night. So I can just show you like how like just being an individual, these these interactions can just switch up so drastically. Like mm-hmm. I'm over here laughing, chatting with Taco, and then mm-hmm. Tyler's like, hey, "You feel me?" Mm-hmm. Mind you, I'm still a fan like of of Tyler's and everything he's done, but that just shows you like at the end of the day, like the work in a person. While the work is like an extension of them, there's still a person exactly. at the end of all of it. Exactly. So just treat niggas with respect. And if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. If not, it's not. So that's how I kind of like go with it. It's just like, mm-hmm. I've been in this situation before. Mm-hmm. Either do it or shut type shit. That, that's what I say to myself. But that's kind of what I say to anybody. Mm-hmm. Don't be a bitch. <laughs> yeah, I, was definitely, I have PTSD from that moment. I'm like, yo. You know when you pass a moment passes you and you just keep thinking about it like O D this O D I could have said this. Oh and that's why I circled you back to you. That is why I circled back to you. Life as a creative, let's get into that. Do you feel like we are all born creatives? Um, not to get like too deep, but like low key, yeah. Like mm-hmm. I wouldn't say get all deep. born <laughs> like all born creative. Uh-huh. I feel like anything we do is creating itself. But I think the difference between someone that like creates something and like an artist is that an artist create with intention. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But naturally we just create as like a way of life. You feel me? Like you put a fit together, you make a meal, you take a sh- creating something, you're dispelling something. You feel mm-hmm. me? Like it doesn't even have to be art. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Anything we do with our hands, anything we do with our hands or 
we have a thought or we execute something that came to our heads, like we're always creating something. Mm. So if we're all creatives, does that mean that anyone could be a content creator? Technically, yeah. Bro, I've seen, yo, the Aki way. Oh, <laughs> bro, come on. I was making sandwiches, some that's so fat. Nigga was like, yo, put a honey bun on my shit and bam, bro. Like, yo. It, like, <laughs> and he, he took it and he ran with it. You know what he does? He built, he's he's building an empire and he's holding down this family in Yemen. I was watching like little interviews of like the Aki way dude. Mm. And it's like, anyone can 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 create something. Anyone can be a content creator. It's just knowing what to do. Like, there's, um, there's one thing, they just do, um, my mind just went completely blank. But people will like do something on the internet that people will enjoy mm. and they'll just run with it and it'll be an accident. The f tour girl, bro. Like the hawk tour. Spit on that thing. The, the white shorty. You know what I'm talking about? Nah, I don't. The, the hawk tour. If she don't hawk tour, I don't talk Why to does that. it sound familiar? But nah, it's not. It's literally a white girl talking about giving head and, and then she, oh, the wow. dude was like, yo, like, what are you supposed to do with it? And she's like, you got to hawk tour and spit on that thing. It went viral. <laughs> Literally, it was like one of those stupid street interviews where they interview drunk people. And she was like, basically spit on the nuts. And oh, wow. people were like, yo, we need her. We love her. And she's yo. a fucking multimillionaire. And I'm not hating. But it's like, she, I think I read online that she's worth 12 mil. I don't know how true that is. But she's making a bag. She's selling merch. She's making, she's getting sponsored. She's getting brand deals for literally saying, Haktua, spit on that thing. And crazy. It's an interesting world we live in. It's an insane world we live in. Which, but she's not an artist. There was no intent behind that. She was just being her self. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you think even the most boringest person in the world can become a content creator? Literally be a content creator. There's a niche for everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A successful content creator. So like there's a niche for everything. Yeah, if people like you, they like you. Like The thing about content creators is that like... The ones that don't do any type of talent, like they're a brand. You just become a brand. Like people just have to like you. People have to f you. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and like Mans was saying earlier, um, when you don't know how to operate media and the internet, like it's all a science. It's like the shit comes down to a science. You feel I me? Mean? Either people are gonna take to it or they're not gonna take to it. I'm watching one of my homies have a crazy viral like blow up moment, and the way he moves is so calculated. Like mm -hmm. from the rollout to like even the Strategy. saying like his strategy is nuts because people are going to eat that shit the mm -hmm. up so um whether it's art whether it's content creation and for one like i hate the fact that people kind of use content creator to like umbrella everything mm -hmm. like so oh like i'm oh he's a content creator like no i'm a painter you know what i'm saying like i'm a photographer i'm a, I'm a artist TikToker. yeah like I'm not no <laughs> you know what i'm saying like i'm not doing that Yo, I gotta get you to do a TikTok. <laughs> nah. I wanna see that. Um, let's get into building an authentic community. Yeah. That's the theme of my life right now. Mm. Is it harder to build genuine communities nowadays, especially because of social media? Yes and no. Um I feel like that's just a thing with the when I was younger, I feel like it was harder to build genuine communities. I feel like there's like I feel like there's such a there's this collective feeling I've noticed like with each shift of like age, people start moving very differently, but they move adjacent to how you're currently feeling. It's like a weird like like universal. You ever heard about the like the the theory, the universe theory where we're all one big thing of energy and it's like the universe is just using us as sock puppets. It's like there's one big mass of energy. That's all of us. We're all cosmic dust and stars. And the universe is just putting us on like a glove and playing with us. Like, so me and you are one in the same. Um, we're from the it same It sounds entity. like the sixth degree kind of thing. Type sh yeah. It's, but like, we're literally all one. Like, we're one entire thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've heard of Or like, that. we're all I've like. definitely heard of that. Yeah. Or like yeah, the Yeah, we're all connected. Like. Literally all connected. Like yeah. taking. You watch Rick and Morty? You I ever seen Rick to. and Morty? You remember the Hive Mind episode? No, I watched like five episodes. There's an episode where there's like a hive mind and it's like she basically infects people by getting them to throw up in each other's mouths. But um, she comes as a deity. As, yeah. She comes as a deity, as like a creature. She'll infect one person, the other person, the other person, and she'll have like total control to like their feelings, brains, and 
and they all have like their own personalities, but they all kind of operate on one plane. That's what that's I some smacked. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, sober as shit. This. Whoever created that was smacked. But yeah. um, I get, I get, I get what exactly what you mean. Yeah, it, yeah, it is. I, I wouldn't say necessarily harder. I think we're more emotionally intelligent. Emotionally intelligent. Mm-hmm. I think it's harder in terms of like just having the time. Like my big theme in life right now mm-hmm. is being more intentional with the people that I already have in front of me mm-hmm. and acknowledging and being more open and unreserved with people that want to get close to me. Because before I'm like, I don't f with niggas. Like I don't no. like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like cause people like the the couple times I've opened up my heart and my home and like my resource to mm-hmm. people that were bought to me. They f me over like in like yeah. crazy ways, disrespecting yeah. me, like yeah. spit on my face. Like, and it's taking everything in me not to crash out because mm-hmm. of it. But once you recognize like your mission and why you were placed here and how valuable you are, like you realize like these are people that needed some type of healing or needed to get that off. Like they projected yeah. all their issue yeah. onto you. So like if you really want community, that's going to be inevitable. You feel me? Like Mm -hmm. you're going to have to take a risk just like with anything else. Like you want to build something beautiful and authentic. You have to put yourself out there. And that sounds mad cliche, but that's what I've learned the hard way. Like this year I've had to disconnect with old friends or detach from certain people that had, they, they, they stopped growing. You know what I'm saying? Once you stop growing, like, and I'm progressing forward and I'm trying to evolve and be a better version of myself than yesterday, and you're still where you're at. There becomes a disconnect and there's no like harm done, but I need to move forward into something that's going to serve me. You know, things that no longer serve me have no space in my life or it's, it's detrimental to what I'm going to have going on. So in search of new community and friendships, like I've had actual artists like really embrace me and like show me like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, like we're here. You know what I'm saying? We got you. Like we may not be the most consistent communication, but where we're rooting for you and we rally together and we support mm-hmm. each other. Like one of my favorite artists that I was originally a fan of. Now we have a whole f-ing song together is uh, Thomas life of Tom. And when I really started like putting my foot forward with the music, like he would like give me like little tips and tricks and really push me forward and speak life into me. And that's my, my thing now is like, people are really speaking life into me, like without me really having to do much, but they just recognize like what I'm about. And Mm -hmm. I think your tribe is going to find you, is going to see you for like who you really are. And, you know, anything I can do to reciprocate, I reciprocate, you feel me? So, Mm -hmm. oh, it's harder to find community if, again, you're you're moving reserved. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's why I like try to go to events like that. And because I went to another event Thursday that was really cool, similar to Culture Con, but it was way smaller, way more intimate. But um, it also reminded me like, yo, you're all in your head. Put yourself out there. Like, that's the only way people are going to know who you are, yeah. like outside of the internet. Yeah. Because you can't, it's un- uncomparable, you know? Yeah. Another thing too I found is that <clears throat> this is the hundredth episode, but it's like, you see, I'm still by my dolly. You know what OD, I mean? At the yeah. top, it's lonely. You feel me? I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't start. Well, I did start by my dolly, but I still have friends around me. But then I started to see like their true colors and it kind of made me, that's what made me reserved. It's like, yeah. be your own man. Be your own man. That shit so disheartening. Yo. It's like, like nigga, eat my mama's food. You feel me? Like, heart. Man, man, type shit. So yeah, that's like, I'm trying to um, not allow that not to move so much off of fear anymore that yeah everybody's like that yeah fear is the mind killer that's especially when it's multiple people multiple people like be f- yep but then again like you know i don't know if you're religious at all or spiritual but i always ask god ask the universe yo like remove those that mean me harm remove oh, those yeah, that no longer so- pray that. and then when they <laughs> drop and it's like hey 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 are you sure he should him her yo, him him her him trust like trust yo trust it's crazy it's like it's, damn but then you realize once you once you my pops always says it. I, I quote this in the daily. He says, "Believe people when they show you who yes. you are." You know what I'm saying? When someone I shows you who are the that. first time, like believe them. I love saying that. And I be my stupid to give the benefit of the doubt. It's like nah, I'll like justify the behavior mm-hmm. because me like I'm a Pisces, right? But I always I always find logic. So it's like, oh, you act like that because your mom did this to you when you were 12. Like I'd be psychoanalyzing the f- out of people, <laughs> but in doing that. Sh- accidentally justify their bullshit behavior yeah that was like it'd be real though it'd be real as fuck. it's like i'm a, i can't fault you for that like you were raised off for survival for certain like the way people move you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying or certain shit. but 
Now it's like, just because this happened to you or you move like this because of that doesn't mean I should have to suffer for it. Go to therapy. Do something. Like, I can no longer be like... Journal. Do you know what I'm saying? Please. It's draining. Yeah. You know, especially when you have like healer energy, like niggas who just sense that. You know especially when you're a natural giver. and Type shit. Yo, and that's not reciprocated most of the time. OD. Say, yo, they will take until you have nothing until left. They will take nothing. the damn clothes off of your back. And, it, it's and then say, oh, why don't you got a shirt on? Um, got it. That's the last one in my size. But it's like, yo, like, it, and even for us, like, natural givers, like, it's hard to be selfish. Like, that don't just don't even feel right. It don't feel natural for me to be. I don't right. think it's selfish. Well, not selfish, to, but move more like. Put up less, boundaries. Boundaries, yes. Yeah. But even like the way I f somebody is like I fuck the way, like what I have is what you have. You feel me? Like mm. if I love you, I'm loving same, you all the way. Same, same. So for me to like have to set a boundary and be like, no, nah, I can't do that, it always feels weird. It's like, ugh. Yeah, that's true. Like this doesn't even yeah, feel it's natural. not me being myself. You feel me? Like I want to give I'm you being reserved. Like, I want to give you what you asked for, you know what I'm saying? And then but I have then it's like, yo. You can't even pour back into yourself when you're around them too much. OD, now. OD. And that's when I found like my friends now, like like my homie Lord, like I talk to him every day. Like we were roommates in college and now like so that's Fire. my brother. And like we pour into each other constantly, my nigga. We each other constantly. We grow mm -hmm. each other constantly. Like if he's going through a situation, like sooner or later, I'm going to go through the same exact situation that we learn from each other. You feel me? If I'm up and I got bread, I'm going to break him off. If he's up and he got bread, he break me off just off the strength. So like, I learned that I can still love and be unreserved, but it's just certain people like, you have to, you can be that way with. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. You can be selective that way with, with it. Type, yeah. So mm -hmm. you can still be your natural way of self. You just can't be that way with everybody. I think exactly. that's like the big boundary. Mm -hmm. What I also found to go into I mean all right the event I went to Thursday was like last minute thing um it was Jordan woman Jordan event collaboration oh, with Nordstrom fine. so they were just doing like just like this panel discussion thing they were giving out they had raffles they were giving out like cameras to people in the audience like some cool like creative okay. kind of vibes and what I also realized is that because I spoke up and I did similar to what I did at CultureCon. I, I grabbed the mic and I was like, oh, like my name's Deja, my podcast, da 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 um, What I realized is it's in the mind. Type. It's in the mind. Because I was sitting there and I'm just like, yo, why are you being shy? Why are you being <laughs> nervous? Like, get up and say something. Get like, up. Get up. Get <laughs> up. Because... <laughs> Really, that voice in your head is like it can make or break you, honestly. Yeah. So, what what has been the catalyst for you, just kind of coming out your cell and like moving forward? Like, because I no longer want to. F I want a new reality, like mentally. I like that. I want a new. Re I don't want to move in fear no more. Type shit. I want to be free from the shackles of just the limitations of my mind. Yeah. That's a sign. That, that sounded that mad poetic. That was poetic. Fuck, and use over here, everybody. Yeah. Well, you gotta add the snaps. Yo, that was mad poetic. Yeah, I was just. I'm just tired of living in fear, living like just with bitterness with pe what people did to me in my in my oh, past yeah. and. Yeah, and stop giving myself excuses because you're literally you're literally the creator of your life. So Touch if you it. tell yourself you can, it's true. If you tell yourself you can't, it's also true. Yeah, you shape your reality with every thought, with every, with every affirmation, with every naysay, my nigga. That's the reality you make for yourself. Exactly. That's so true. especially when you're going to these places alone, like your internal dialogue, dialogue be loud as hell. O D like the voices, the voices, the voices, the voices. <laughs> like, so yeah, that's what I realized is that I don't, I can't lean off of a friend. I can't like yeah. hide behind anybody I brought. You know yeah. what I mean? It's oh, just yeah. me. It's yeah, just me. Ass. It's me, nigga. <laughs> 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 but it's so it's it's so liberating though once you finally like 
because I already enjoy my own company, but when I enjoy my own company in spaces that require you to be a socialite, it's like, okay, like now I know how to work the room. Yo, that shit is it bad. unlocks a whole new world. I feel like, like yo, Goku Ultra yo, Instinct. What? That motherfucker. I can do anything. I can do anything. Yo, when I say that was a big fear of mine, like you don't understand. So it's like, I'm going to definitely do it more. It's like a drug. I'm like, I'm going to do it again. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, for people who are scared to put themselves out there, that's really why Like I'm like, do it. Trust me. Yeah. That's the only way you're going to find your people Yo. is by doing that. One of like the biggest thing, like just putting yourself out there, even like executing an idea or a project, like, and it sounds a bit morbid, but if COVID didn't teach you any f- thing is that your ass could die tomorrow unexpectedly. Like mm-hmm. the amount of death and grieving we've seen over the past four or five f- years, mm-hmm. you're going to sit here and tell me you're worried about like, how people perceive you you're not gonna execute that idea because you're nervous because you think because you're getting nervous like <laughs> son like it Yo. just like do it just just do it for real it's and a thought that i've been having recently like you don't know no nerve well not well yeah you don't know any shy old people child yeah they be talking shit old yeah. people be saying crazy but that like ties back into what you're saying like yeah Because they know Like it don't matter They're about to Oh shit Yeah, <laughs> Ty, yeah. <laughs> Damn I didn't even minute. think about, Yeah their so filter it's like, is Why the over. hell Are they gonna be shy And nervous Yeah their filter is done Yeah Like what are you gonna do I got like 10 more years left Like <laughs> If that If that You feel me Like Yo, Damn I can go at any minute You think I'm gonna be shy if, Ty, Yeah I'm not I'm gonna be myself That's another thing I be telling myself You could die today Like mm-hmm. you better say something now You feel me exactly. It's crazy I feel like being an artist, like, that just literally just applies to, like, everything in life. Like, literally everything. Even, like, my shorty, like, like, sliding, like, in her DM. Actually, she low-key said in my DM. But the fact of the matter is... Oh, that's crazy. Type, right? It's like... <laughs> what I, she said. I think... Oh, so I had, like, kind of, like, slid up. I was like, yo, we should get Japanese sometime. But I never followed up for whatever reason. I was I was doing whatever. And then she hit me up like a, a like a couple months later and she's like, yo, did you still want to get Japanese or what? And I was like, oh, wow. All right, vet, what do you do? And so like, you slid first. You can't say slid. Yeah, but I didn't follow up at okay. all. It's like, yeah, that's like a nigga approaching like the free throw line, just like, you know what? I don't really feel like it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so like we just like take and like it went from that to like we're like a year plus in and like probably the healthiest relationship thank you the healthiest relationship we've ever been in and that just came out and we're both like shy people we don't approach mm-hmm. people like we're not like well in, in shy in terms of like like non-networky like mm-hmm. you know business things so it's like reserved that's type, yeah we're reserved but like the fact that we came out of our shows anytime I've ever came out my show and, and stopped being reserved about something something good has always happened that's you know so I mean? true something good whether it was a relationship whether, mm-hmm. well, whether it was a relationship Music, friendship, adventure. Mm-hmm. Fucking, On the other side of fear is everything you ever wanted. Type shit. I never heard that. Who, who said that? Um, Will Smith. Really? But he got it from he somewhere. He got it from he somewhere. Definitely, I yeah, did he not definitely come definitely. up with that shit. But I heard him say it. Yeah. In his book. He's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Is there anything you're working on you want to share about? Oh shit. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Um, I'm working on an insane album right now. Probably my best album, my most mature album. Everything that we've talked about has all been has all like led up to this album just because these are the themes that have come in my life, like detoxing, uh, detachment, mental health, like community. Everything has been kind of pulled siphoned into this project this body of work and it's called everything is fine and like it's a double entendre like everything is like you know everything's pretty good life is pretty good but also everything is fine is kind of like you know the automatic response you give to people when you're navigating life and you ask how's it going really everything's in shambles Mm -hmm. like it's like so like a relative could have died lost your job you broke like and every day you put on that face and you're hustling dude yeah everything is fine you know what i'm saying so that's what that album is to me. Like, I've I've had full on like aunties and uncles die on me like an hour before I have to shoot a fucking 
music video or like while I'm in the studio or like I'm at a show, like my uncle like got like rest in peace. Like he was a big catalyst for like how I move now and like this album, he he died in 2022. And I was performing a benefit concert for women of a, like domestic violence. Like it was like a fundraiser for like women in shelters. And um I was on the lineup and I was feeling like this this angst and um he checked like while I was doing it. So it was like, um, wow. yeah, it was like, how, how do you, how do you bounce back from that? You know what I'm saying? Like you do your thing, you have to put on this face. So like everything is fine. You feel me? Like I, as long as I'm still here, mm. as long as I have the means, as long as I have my voice, as long as I have the ability to be better than yesterday, everything is fine. You mm. feel me? That's deep. Even though it's not. And, um, mm. The project is 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 one of my favorites. I got some of my favorite artists on it. I got Ice Cold Bishop on it, and I fuck. Ice Cold Bishop is one of my favorite artists from the West Coast, and um, he shows mad love. I got Life of Tom on it, uh, Three Hundred Five from Atlanta. Like he's on it. Like cool, cool features. And um, while I'm not one of them niggas, like yeah, I need to get every feature in the world, like da da da, but. Some of my best work comes with just like collabing with like another mm -hmm. mind. But mm -hmm. even my shit where I'm just on it, it's like it's real introspective. It's real self-aware. It's real like it's not like on some depressed like, oh, what was me? What was me? Like, nah, like mm -hmm. in the same breath I took a L, I made it back like five times more. You feel me? So you see, if you, you, you get knocked down and you sit there and you be stagnant or you or you acknowledge your feelings, process them in like a, a, a productive way. And you get back to it. You feel me? I feel like that's where like up is like they'll go to some traumatic and they'll get stuck. And for me, like to be complacent, my nigga, like to be still is is to die. Cause once you stop, scary. once you stop growing, it's like where do you go from here? Yes. Yeah, like scary. don't set no ceilings. Like you can't, it's so easy to get trapped in your grief. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Do you so, know people that be at companies and they're there for like Yo, 60 years. 60 like, year, yo, what? He's like, yeah, I seen when Macy's was being founded. Oh, Some lady that I worked with when I was at Macy's, she had a cane. I'm like, yo, yo what are you doing? <laughs> but some, I can't even like, I can't even fault that because once people find like something comfortable and stable mm -hmm. and they're happy, they're content. Yeah. So my, my, my cup of at any chai isn't going to be like your coffee you feel me like mm. some people want that stable like True. yeah i'm going to be here for 40 years get my my paycheck my my, my uh 401k and all that but Social it's scary when i see people it's scary I but then me scared. i don't i get i get bored fast my gemini moon son like i need to be entertained i need to be on my toes i don't like structure like i want to experience life in its fullest mm -hmm. whether it's it's stable or not but i also realize there needs to be a balance for it mm -hmm. you feel me so I just can't, I can't afford to just stay still. Yeah. I know for what I want and where I need to go, I need to evolve as much as possible. So every like, anytime someone f me over, anytime I take a loss, I know that's a lesson learned and that's something to add to the growing points. Mm. Life is one big video game. Life is one big RPG. Like did That's I essentially what Mind of Matter is. Type mind shit. over matter, baby. Mind over matter. Oh shit, yeah. yeah. Mind over matter. Gotta, gotta what do does that. that mean to you? Mind over matter? What we've been talking about this whole time, like your mind is in charge of everything. Nothing on the outside should be in control of your mind. You feel me? Mind over life in its entirety. You know what I'm saying? Once you have control of that, once you master that, any situation you can conquer, any situation you can overcome. Once you master everything that's in your head top, like you're straight, like you can be starving and living in a but as long as you have some 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 type of will and resolve, once your mind is in tune with a goal that you want going forward, like you can knock down anything. Mm -hmm. That's what that means to me. Mind over matter, because nothing mm -hmm. else matters except your mind. Wow! Mm -hmm. <laughs> pew pew pew. Um, how how much time is that art? Okay. Because I put this on TV, it's only an hour slot. I'm gonna keep it at this. Oh, fire! Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Me. Mama, I'm a star. Public accent, you know, we're That's getting so somewhere. Fire. <laughs> getting somewhere. But um, yeah, thank you for joining me. Of course, thank you for having me. It's of course, of fun. course, this was a very enlightening conversation. And if you reached the end of another episode, I appreciate you. Shout out to you. You made it to another end of another episode, and I could tell you love yourself. I could just tell it. I just know you do. 
And don't forget to tell a friend, tell a friend, mother. That is mind over matter, baby. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>